Hi, welcome to uh, Mitch's 3D printing videos. Uh, today I'm going to be unboxing the CMB CNC Eris. Uh, this is one of the first 10 that shipped um, production models. Um, this is actually filmed before Maker Fair, the Bay Area Maker Fair, and um, I'm actually going to meet the guys from CMB CNC. I saw them on uh, Facebook uh, dumping one of these printers off the table and breaking it and then putting it back together. And I was like, that's pretty cool that it's, so, it's durable. So um, I've been kind of looking at this for a while. I've been looking at the Rostock Max and the Orion and uh, very interested in Deltas. This is not my first Delta printer. I actually built my own uh, RichRap 3DR. So um, I know a little bit about Delta printers. Um, a little frustrated with uh, calibration. So I'm gonna see how, how much easier this one is to calibrate. Um, or if it automatically calibrates itself. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, so this is the, uh, again, the CNC, CME CNC Eris. Um, this is a, uh, a $600. Uh, um, it's comparable in price to a printer bought simple metal. Um, uh, again, no active heated bed. Um, it does have a heated bed from the electronics, so we're going to explore that today. Um, let me start by unboxing it. So my trusty Leatherman squirt. I'm going to cut this box open. I know unboxing videos can be kind of boring at times, so I'm going to try to make this one quick. Uh, hopefully, ideally, we can get this out of the box and printing within about 30 minutes, but I have never seen a 3D printer that could be unboxed and print in such a quick time. Um, I will have to play with the software and the slicer um, to probably get something decent out of it. Um, there's probably no preloaded SD card, so I'm going to have to hook up my computer and slice for it. Okay. It has a nice injection molded handle top. It feels amazingly compact. Oh, there is a test print on here. Awesome. Okay. What else does it come with? Let's reach in here. I'm going to put this on the floor. Nice foam packaging. It's going to survive through the mail pretty well. Oh man. It comes with yellow banana 1.75 millimeter PLA. I have Micro Center red P PLA. Um, they usually have on sale for about $15. Comes with a generic power supply, 12 volts at 6.6 .6 amps, um, 80 watts max. Uh, this is a very tiny build platform, um, so I'm pretty sure the heated bed will need a little bit of a, a power upgrade. And we have a power cord, very hefty three prong AC cord. And then we have an A to B cord, USB. Looks like a pretty long cord with ferrite beads. Um, I'll probably be tethering this to either an Octoprint or a small tablet. So I probably won't have a dedicated computer for this, this printer. Um, something that I can carry with me that will be portable. Um, it looks like it already has a carrying handle. This thing weighs no more than 8 pounds. Uh, it's very lightweight. Um, I got this fancy uh, spatula so you can pry your parts off. I've never really had a spatula. I use a spatula um, usually for the Cricut machines or smaller spade spatulas, and they're good for the other, other printers I work on. Um, this actually looks like it has, let me turn it around for you. Uh, as you can see, there's a little test print right here. So it looks like it sticks very well for PLA. Um, uh, not the best looking test print. It might need to be a little leveled a little bit more. Um, we'll find out more. It looks like these uh, these are actually tabbed, it looks like. 
So you can actually turn these. And there's a little cup lip here that you can lift your glass plate out. This is a borosilicate, borosilicate glass with a ultra, ultra lex. It's basically, it looks like a, uh, some kind of textured sticker. That's probably good for, uh, you know, building stuff onto. Um, that's really neat. It does have an indentation here. And in there is actually, uh, looks like there's a port hole. So eventually you'll be able to just add a heated bed directly on here. That's the idea. Um, I don't know if I'll need a heated bed. I hope, I hope not, but I've never really printed without a heated bed um, because I usually print an ABS. I would love to print ABS on this thing. Um, not necessary, but you know, for small parts, um, you don't really need the heated bed. For ABS, you're still going to need a heated bed. And I guess I don't have to worry about level, auto leveling because there's really no in stops. So if you look in here, there's no, there's no in stops. There's just idlers. Um, it's basically there's belts, and the belts go up to these idlers up up in this area, and uh, and there's really no in stops. I think the in stops are actually the in stops are actually down here, um, and the belt has a little clip on it, and that clip on the belt actually hits the in stop. I don't know where they are actually, so I'm gonna have to look deeper into the inside of the machine. I'm assuming there's probably two, three small NEMA 17 motors, and there's one NEMA 17 motor for the extruder. Very nice lever, pull lever. There's a little bit of shift to it, but I guess it doesn't matter as long as it's not affecting the Bowden tube. It is a Bowden tube with power lines to the head. This head is very interesting. Um, this is actually, I can, yeah, these arms are a little wobbly. You can tell, but they're not really any, any different than carbon fiber rods with Traxxas. Um, I can tell by the play. There's very little free play. Um, these are actually, um, it looks like these um, carriages are made with some kind of plastic. Um, they said it was, so it looks like they're kind of slick, slick plastic that's going to ride on these, uh, it looks like six millimeter rods. Um, so. It's not much different than any uh, another belt delta printers I've built. Um, uh, I'm not too sure how the linear motion is going to work, but we'll find out in the quality testing when I do my first print. Um, here's a it looks like a clip-on spool holder. This is the front of the machine. The front of the machine has the Aris logo. Uh, Okay, there's a slot back here. There's a actually slot right here. There you go, pops right in. Um, it presses against here like a foot. I'm assuming that's the balance of the load of the weight from the, the spool. So I'm assuming a full kilogram spool, yeah, it's gonna rest down here on the table. Of course, we can print another one if we wanted to. I like having spool holders either separately um, I would like to see maybe a little box that I could put this whole thing on that has a spool underneath it. Um, as long as it unravels perfect, fine. It looks like there's a filament guide tube all the way through the machine. Um, oh, here it is. So as you can see, there's a tube right here. So the tube will go through here all the way, guide tube all the way through the extruder. This looks like this can pop off pretty easily, but um, this is going to light up when it turns on from the videos I've seen. So, because um, I guess it's a pre, it's a production model and it just came out. There's not a lot of documentation yet, um, so I'm going to be following up with the uh, CME CNC forums. Um, so I got the early adopter special since this is first to ten. Um, so I'm going to be doing some calibration on it. I'm not too fond of matter control. Um, I just downloaded it and played with it. It's, um, I don't know. I'm going to have to play with Cura, Simplify 3D, and probably either Kiss Slicer or Slicer with a 3. Um, see what, which one I like. I, I would like to get this down into Simplify 3D along with my Mendel 90 that I have at home. Um, so I have the Mendel 90 and then this will be my small portable printer that I take to shows and kind of show off and, you know. It's really lightweight though. I mean. 
it really wouldn't take much to set this up. And if the auto calibration works like they say it does, it should just be where I could just take it out of my bag and put it on the table and press print. Um, so well, let's, let's hope so. The main selling point of this printer so far, and I'm gonna have to test this, is there's an all metal hot end. And it's actually built on top of a PCB. That PCB has an uh, accelerometer built in. And the accelerometer actually will tap on the glass and actually detect the uh, Z end stop um, for auto leveling. So the auto leveling Z, uh, Z offset um, or Z height offset, and it also will detect the um, delta radius curvature. Um, which are the hardest things to calibrate manually on the Delta printer. Um, that's assuming all your arms are at equal length and everything is put in the firmware properly. Um, so this firmware is already pre-programmed. So really all I, I should have to do is run the G code to auto level and then I should be able to do a test print. So, um, but that does it for the unboxing video of the CME CNC Eris. Hope you enjoyed my channel. Thank you.